Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepak Shikurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 26th of September. India's space agency places eight satellites into orbit in landmark mission. Death toll in Bangladesh foil factory fire soars to 39. And India holds joint military exercise with US to strengthen defense cooperation. And now for all the details, a day after hitting out at Pakistan over the Uri terror attack, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Monday reviewed the Indus Waters Treaty. Under this treaty, India gives 80% of water from western rivers to Pakistan. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi met authorities from the Foreign Ministry and the Water Resources Ministry and got a briefing on the Indus Waters Treaty with Pakistan. The Prime Minister is said to have looked at the pros and cons of the pact. This comes as one of the various options that India is considering in response to Pakistan for the recent terror attack in Uri in India's northern province of Jammu and Kashmir in which 18 Indian soldiers were killed. India blames Pakistan-based terror outfit for the attack. Uh, conduct the Indus Waters Treaty was signed in 1960 by the then Indian Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru and Pakistan President Ayub Khan after the pact was brokered by World Bank. The Indus Pact has survived three wars between India and Pakistan. Experts, however, say that since it is an international agreement, it will not be easy for India alone to withdraw. Meanwhile, India's space organization on Monday successfully placed eight satellites in different orbits in its PSLV's longest flight. It is hailed as another milestone for the space organization. In its longest mission, India's Space Research Organization, or ISRO, on Monday successfully launched Polar Satellite Launch Vehicle, or PSLV C-35, carrying eight satellites. The mission was also challenging for the organization as the PSLV C-35 launched its payloads in two different orbits. The twin orbit maneuver was recently accomplished by European Space Agency's Vega rocket. PSLV C-35 which lifted off from India's Southern Space Centre, Sri Harikota, placed its main payload, SCATSAT-1, a weather satellite in its orbit in about 17 minutes after its launch. The other seven, which included five foreign satellites, were also injected into a different orbit, which was over 124 miles higher. Among the Indian satellites placed, two satellites, Pratham and PSAT were academic satellites built by students of Indian Institute of Technology, Mumbai and PES University, Bengaluru and its consortium, respectively. It has demonstrated a new technique of uh, injecting satellites into multiple orbits with the same launcher. So this is a breakthrough as far as the technology is concerned. Uh, in fact, uh, it is just not only that main satellite was put in an orbit of nearly 700 kilometers and after the, uh, the final stage being in orbit for almost uh, two hours, it has been reignited and uh, other new set of satellites have been put into an orbit which is about 200 kilometers uh, higher. So this is a remarkable achievement for ISRO. The whole procedure was completed within two hours and 15 minutes, the longest mission for ISRO. Staying on news from India, the Indo-US Joint Military Training Exercise or Youth Abhyas was conducted in mountainous region of northern India. The exercise was aimed at helping soldiers of both the countries in fighting in adverse situation. The inaccessible mountains of Ranikhet in India's northern Uttarakhand province hosted the 12th edition of the Indo-US Joint Military Training Exercise. 
The training exercise is an annual battalion level exercise conducted with 225 personnel from each side, which takes place in India and the US alternatively. Security personnel of the two countries shared their experiences on counter militant operations, especially in mountainous region. The overall experience uh, has been amazing. It's, and again, the Indian Army has been extremely, extremely generous and very caring. They've been training us a lot. They've been just showing us different techniques and bouncing ideas off each other. So it's been, it's been a wonderful experience. The joint exercises include room intervention, cordon and search in counter militant operations, jungle lane shooting, reflex shooting, long range firing and cliff assault techniques. It comes as a major boost to defense cooperation between the two countries. Moving on, acknowledging the role of Pakistan military in administrative and political decisions, Vice President of European Parliament called for strict action against atrocities on people of Balochistan. Our report. Expressing solidarity with the people of Balochistan against Pakistan's atrocities, European Parliament Vice President Rishad Tarnetsky has said the European Union may impose economic and political sanctions on Islamabad if the Asian nation fails to stop the human rights violation in the region. Tarnetsky attended a silent vigil along with members of the Baloch Republican Party. People paid homage to those who lost their lives and condemned Pakistan for the ongoing atrocities in Pakistan's southwestern province. He added that it is time for action and not just exchanging words. I would like to say that this is not internal uh, matter of uh, Pakistan, EU countries, 28 member states should react for this uh, very brutal uh, oppressions, very brutal uh, policy of uh, government. He also acknowledged the problem in Pakistan is that the government is controlled by the military and maintains dual standards. Meanwhile, India and Afghanistan has reached an agreement for establishment of air corridor. It will be used predominantly to send Afghan goods to India. This comes after Afghan President Ashraf Ghani, who visited India last week, urged Indian businessmen to use the air route for trade with his landlocked country in face of hindrances caused by Pakistan in road transportation. Earlier this month, President Ghani had called upon Pakistan to allow Kabul to engage in trade with India through its land routes, but the request turned down by Islamabad. News from Bangladesh. The High Court in Dhaka has ordered the authorities to freeze bank accounts of Sayyid Mokbul Hussain, chairman of the Tempaco Foils Limited. The company's factory in Tongi town of Bangladesh had collapsed on September 10th after a fire broke out which killed dozens of workers. The court, however, stated that money from the bank account can be withdrawn only for the payment of the salaries and other benefits of the workers. The death toll from the disaster climbed up to 39 on Monday as two more bodies were recovered by rescue workers from the rubble of the factory. The bodies are in no condition to be identified. It was Bangladesh's worst industrial disaster since the 2013 Rana Plaza factory collapse that left over 1,100 people, mostly workers, dead. More news from India. The tourism industry in Kashmir Valley of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir province has suffered a setback due to the stir created by separatist groups. A report. Almost three month long unrest in India's Kashmir has broken the back of tourism industry as tourists have kept away from the province, leaving the stakeholders high and dry. However, the curfew which was imposed in the valley for the last 79 days was lifted from all parts on Sunday, but restrictions on assembly of people remained in force in most areas as a precautionary measure. 
The Kashmir Valley, with its picturesque lakes and gardens, is thronged by tourists from the northern and central parts during May-November period. Tourists come in from foreign countries too. This unrest was just because of overall Kashmir was affected. Every single part was affected. और अगर अब अगर टूरिज्म सेक्टर की बात करें तो टूरिज्म सेक्टर को काफ़ी बहुत ज़्यादा नुकसान हुआ अमरनाथ यात्रा भी उससे थोड़ी बहुत मुतासर रही उसके बाद जो टूरिस्ट आने वाले थे उस सेक्टर को भी नुकसान हुआ कई टूरिस्ट जो है 100 परसेंट कैंसिलेशन हुई यहाँ की होटल एयर्स और जो इससे अलाइड जो लोग जो, जो जुड़े हैं टूरिज़म सेक्टर से उनको काफ़ी नुकसान हुआ A major chunk of Kashmir's population is dependent on tourism, directly or indirectly, for earning their livelihood. Separatist groups are spearheading the unrest in the valley, resulting in violent clashes that broke out a day after Burhan Wani, a militant of Pakistan-based terror outfit Hizbul Mujahideen, was killed in an encounter with security forces on July 8. However, the provincial government has been lifting the curfew from time to time. A first of its kind exhibition on childhood cancer awareness was recently held in India's northern Uttar Pradesh province. The event is part of a campaign by a non-governmental led by childhood cancer survivors. A non-governmental organization held a first-of-its-kind exhibition on childhood cancer awareness at India's iconic Taj Mahal. The exhibition saw participation of hundreds of cancer-affected children and their families. As part of the campaign, the participants have listed eight demands, including increasing the number of cancer care centers and a proper childhood cancer program. कैंपेन में मैं दो लाख पचास हजार सिग्नेचर कलेक्ट कर रहा हूं पूरे दुनिया से जो हर एक सिग्नेचर एक उस बच्चे के लिए जो हर साल नए कैंसर से के से पीड़ित होता है और इस इस प्लेज को मैं गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया प्राइम मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया और हेल्थ मिनिस्टर ऑफ इंडिया को मैं प्रेजेंट करने कर, करूंगा ताकि हम उनसे हमारे जो आठ मांगे हैं उन, वो पूरा करवा सकूँ The organizers chose the Taj Mahal in an attempt to increase publicity about the event and spread awareness. September is recognized worldwide as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. According to the Indian Council of Medical Research or ICMR, cancer is spreading at an alarming rate in India. An array of Indian traditional attire was exhibited at a fashion event in India's eastern Bhubaneswar city. The collection was fused with western elements giving a modern vibe. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India's space agency places eight satellites into orbit in landmark mission. Death toll in Bangladesh oil factory fire soars to 39. And India holds joint military exercise with US to strengthen defense cooperation. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline.
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.